Greetings, welcome. Welcome to our first video on chapter four. And this is part two of the time value of money. In this chapter, we'll be considering how to modify um, the time value money equations uh, so that we can use it in more complex compounding or discounting um, equations, a little more complex than just the lump sums that we've been dealing with in chapter three. So specifically for this video, uh, we'll do consider 4.1, which is um, computing the future values of multiple cash flows or uneven cash flows. Then we'll be determining the future values of annuities. So these are even cash flows. And we'll stick with our annuities, but consider the present value of these annuity streams. So let's begin with 4.1. So when we're dealing with multiple payments, always think about unequal payments. <clears throat> now, because they're unequal, um, it's really important to calculate um, each individual future value over their um, respective or relevant number of periods. And we'll, and we'll talk about that in just one moment. Um, very important to consider that. Also remember that we're always compounding our cash when we're looking at money moving forward. Okay. Now, once we figure out our individual future values, we can simply sum them up and that will give us that future value that we're looking for. So let's look at it on a timeline, to help us visualize what we're discussing. So in this case here, it looks like someone is, well, it looks like they're investing, they're saving up for some sort of nest egg. They're saving up over a three year period and they're making different deposits. So each year they're making um, uneven deposits. In other words, they're not even, they're not identical. As you can see, obviously, looks like they're increasing their deposit each year. Um, and really what we need to figure out is the individual future uh, cash flow stream of each deposit. So for instance, <clears throat> they initially deposit $2,000 and we wanna know after three years uh, what that value is going to be at a rate of 5%, okay? And again, on, after the first year, then they're gonna deposit 3,000 and so forth until they get to year three where they will deposit 5,000 at the end of the year and then we can sum them all up. So we should get it by now. Next, qu next question is all yours, take a look at it. All right, you probably paused the video and you did all the work so you probably have the answer but let's go through it together. So very similar, in this case we're starting with $3,000. Okay, interest rate's a little bit higher at 10%. And Jim is going to make three more deposits um, after the 3000 Each time he makes those deposits, it's $2,000 more. Okay, So again, it's un uneven cash flow because they're not the same deposit every year. And we just, again, want to know what the total future value is after the end of the three years. So we can use our future value equation. And we really just need to look at each individual uh, payment or cash flow. So reminder, he started with 3,000. <clears> and what, again, going back to that relevant number of periods, really important to realize that because we start with a $3,000 deposit, we have to wait three years. So we're actually accumulating three years worth of interest. And that's how we get a future value of $3,993. Okay, so that's after the end of uh, the first year. Then after year two, we see here that um, there's still two years, sorry, after the year one, we, we see that we still have two years, okay? And that's how we get to 6,000. Um, and after year two, looks like there's still one more year left, okay? So, um, but notice how they, it is uneven. We are depositing 2,000 more than the previous. Uh, and as you can still see that there is some interest being accumulated, um, but not nearly as much interest that was accumulated because of the time, okay? So as the time gets smaller, we can see that we're getting less um, interest accumulated. <clears throat> and then finally, in the end of the of year three, we are depositing $9,000, but notice how the $9,000 um, remains the same as the future value because no no time, okay? So year, it's year zero, no time is actually um, contributed to that interest factor, okay? But anyway, now we have the three individual payments and we can simply add them all up. So this is what we mean by multiple payment streams and calculating the future values individually and then adding them all together. 
Now let's move on to 4.2. So now we're actually referring to equal payments. So when we're referring to annuity streams, we will recognize that they are equal payments. And equal payments, um, well, very similar, or some examples might be paying rent is an equal payment. If you have a mortgage or a car loan, these are all equal payments, okay? Now, one thing to notice, though, is that there's two different types of annuities, okay? And, and really, the, what we mean by different types is when we actually pay these annuities. So you can either, um, <clears throat> they can either start at the, uh, at the beginning of each period, okay? So this is, in other words, what this means is that the annuity or annuity due um, is due at the beginning of the period. So whenever you see annuity due, that you know that you're starting at the beginning of the period versus uh, at the end of a period. So just an ordinary, ordinary annuity, okay? So if it was just called an annuity, we would assume that we're paying at the end of the period, all right? So example of annuity due, well, rent is an example where you have to pay at the first of the month. Okay, an example of an ordinary due is actually a mortgage, which you actually pay at the end of the period. So there are two different examples there. Um, so remember that distinction, very important to remember that. <clears throat> Let's look at a formula here on how we can calculate an annuity stream. Okay, so this is for future values. And here we see, again, that PMT is that payment. Okay, so that's the equal payment. This is why we can use one formula as opposed to the um, multiple payments because the payment remains equal, okay? Um, that's really important to remember. Of course, we know R is our interest rate and N is our number of periods. So I said there, okay? So let's look at an example of the future value of annuity stream. It's good that Jill here, she's very faithful, wonderful to see. So again, you can see now she's in this case, we're paying $2,000 at the end of each year, but it's not changing, okay? So it's a $2,000 um, equal payment, and it's over 10 years, and we have a rate of in 8%. <clears throat> so we should be able to um, calculate that given our equation. So how can we do that? Well, the future value of payment one is, <laughs> So what we're going to show you is we're going to show you how to do it um, individually, okay? And the reason why I'm showing you this is just to maybe appreciate the fact that we don't have to do this every time, okay? But this is one way to use the formula uh, and calculate the uh, future value of each individual payment, just like we did with the multiple payments, okay? But it's good to just see, again, same idea, right? So when we start in uh, the beginning, we notice that we have nine years that's gonna go by, okay, and so forth. So the years get smaller in the number of periods to the point where there's no money accumulated in terms of interest. And then really at the end of 10 years, this is what we get, okay? So that's one way to calculate it, but uh, you might prefer a second way, okay? So first we'll start, <clears throat> we'll take a look at the formula method here. So again, if we use that formula that we just mentioned, um, we can do the math and we will get the same uh, value here, okay? Of course, we can also use our financial calculator. So really important to, to remember the payments, okay? So that's that equal payments every, every year. We put that in as a negative. Uh, we have our interest rate. We have our number of periods, our present value uh, zero, and we're really just trying to compute the future value. So that should give us the same we can also look at it in terms of our spreadsheet. So in Excel, uh, once you punch in the future value formula, they will ask you for these uh, variables. You can put that all in. Remember the zero just means that it's the end of the um, period. So it's an ordinary annuity. Um, and if yes, if we're dealing with an annuity due, then we would make this a one, okay? You can either put a zero or just not include it at all. And you should get the same value. So that's our example for a future annuity stream. Just wanted you to take a look at this colorful graph here um, and just start to recognize the importance of interest rates and what happens um, as the interest rates increase. So again, when we're compounding or um, seeing our growth in our, in our investments, <clears throat> that interest rate really makes a huge difference. Okay, as you can see here, um, even if let's say interest rate of 10%, 
So in this case, we're investing $100 over 20 years and an interest rate of 10%. We're looking at about a uh, future value of just under mm, almost 6,000, okay? But if we take an interest rate of 20%, even though it's, it's double the, um, the 10, obviously, you can see that there's an exponential increase up to 18, almost 19,000, okay? So really good uh, example of that compounding interest and how important interest rates are. In fact, interest rates are so important, we'll probably dedicate a whole chapter to them. We'll see what happens. Let's move on now to um, the present value of an annuity. Okay, so now we're basically thinking about money moving backwards. Okay, but again, it's still a um, equal periodic cash flow. Okay, but you can just see, just in terms of the equation, um, we are looking at it in terms of an inverse. And everything here that you see here, okay, this is considered the um, present value interest factor of an annuity. Okay, and that's going to help us understand um, how much money we need to um, keep or pay in order to get to that certain goal. Okay, so why do we want to know the present value of an annuity? Well, we could help us figure out how much money you want to save for retirement, or maybe you want to figure out how much money do we need to save up for college. Okay, so this can be very helpful. And remember, now that we're looking at money moving backwards. Whenever we're solving for present value, we're going to use the term discounting our cash flows. Okay, so money is going to be discounted. So this is what I mean by discounting cash flows. And again, what does that look like in terms of our uh, timeline here? So again, we can see, so we're trying to determine <clears throat> the present value of this, uh, of this $250. So we see that the money is moving backwards here. And, we're, and you can see how we're discounting that value and we can see what the present value of that money is. So really just the opposite of what we were doing when we we're looking at future values. Now we're trying to consider the present value. So again, imagine, I mean, let's say a really simple example, we need $250 uh, a year for college books. Okay, so we want to figure out how much money we have to save for right now over the next four years. If, if we had this amount of money, about $800, considering we can uh, grow our money by 8%, that should be enough money for us to be able to um, afford those college books for the next four years, okay? Now let's look at a more fun example. Here we are, okay? So they, we wanna save up some money, okay? We are saving for college, but in this case, <clears throat> we're trying to save up for, well, actual, all of the college, I guess, looks like we're, we need $40,000 for the next uh, four years, okay? So in other words, we want to figure out how much money um, will John have to accumulate in an account that earns 7% just prior to the year that his daughter starts college. Okay, so same idea as what we looked at with the books, but just a little bit bigger in terms of numbers. Really, a reminder, when we're solving for the present value, we use the term discounting of cash flows. So we can certainly use this uh, equation here and figure out the present value interest factor. Okay, so again, if we plug in those numbers, the uh, number of years, which is four, it's 7%, 7%, we will get a um, present value interest factor of 3.872. And we simply uh, multiply that <clears throat> by the annuity payment. So in this case, we're looking for $40,000 a year, okay? So we'll see that basically we need to have 135,000, give or take, um, to be able to afford college for the next four years. Okay, now that's the mathematical way to do it or the equation form uh, method. Let's look at the financial calculator method. Um, one thing to notice is <clears throat> make sure that you're in end mode when you're dealing with uh, a financial calculator, okay? Uh, depending on the calculator, it should say so. Uh, usually with a calculator, if, it's, if nothing is shown, then it's, that's usually the end mode. Otherwise, you might see a BEG for begin mode, okay? Um, so again, we'll plug in those numbers and we should get the same value and we can do it as well on a spreadsheet using the present value. And not to worry, you will have more opportunity, particularly with the spreadsheet method as we go through the calculations. So that's been our uh, learning objectives for this video. Uh, join us next time as we continue the time value money equations. Thanks for watching and happy financing.